Hey guys, it's Vanessa and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video! One, because I haven't filmed in so long, and two, I can finally show y'all how I achieve these bomb curls. If you've been struggling with your wash and go, and you've been trying different things but they haven't been working for you, and especially if you have hair like me, like, you need this routine. Two things I will say that I feel like have contributed to my hair looking so good now is one, I recently had a silk press done and I got my ends trimmed all the dead ends gone and also when i did my second big chop last year i got my hair cut in like an actual curly hair shape like a, a proper curly haircut i had a tapered cut and this is the result of it after it's grown out now a whole year later this wash and go is the best wash and go that i've ever done i'm going to be giving you guys the products that i use the technique how to properly dry your hair so if you want to see my new and improved wash and go routine then please keep watching so the very first step in my curly hair routine is pre-pooing which is short for pre-shampoo and i use a treatment or moisturizer on my hair and scalp before i start shampooing so today i'm using the jamaican mango and lime black castor oil with vitamins a d and e and i like to use an oil because it helps lift up dirt and build up from throughout the week this is perfect for those of us who have hair that takes a while to detangle and it cuts down the time you're washing your hair because the detangling process is already done ahead of time. I like to spray my hair a lot with water and then finger detangle a little bit before going in with my brush. Both the brush and spray bottle I'm using are from Natural Babe LA so shout out to them for gifting these to me. But after I detangle, I two strand twist my hair and let it sit for 10-15 to 15 minutes before going into the shower. So yes, the first step is pre-poo, and my wash days go by so much more smoothly when I incorporate this step. This process is definitely messy with my hair being a week old, the shed hair, and using this oil, but it saves so much time when you're in the shower, y'all, trust me. Not only are you getting the detangling process out of the way, but you are also mentally preparing yourself for this wash day because it is a long process even though like i don't even have super long hair or anything it's still a process because i want to make sure i'm putting a lot of effort into each step i want to pay attention to detail and really take my time with every step in my curly hair routine to make sure my results not only look good but also give me longevity with my style Moving on to the washing process, I'm rinsing out the pre-poo now and my curls in this moment feel soft and prepped for shampoo. So the shampoo I'm using today is the Shea Moisture Black Castor Oil Strengthen and Restore Shampoo. I love this line from Shea Moisture specifically because it smells really good and has black castor oil and peppermint, things that I love to include in my hair routine. As you can see, I'm applying the shampoo to my hair and scalp. And I'm using this shampoo generously because I want to make sure my hair is thoroughly cleansed from root to tip. I use a lot of gel, so I'm trying to rinse out all that old gel from the past week and getting rid of all the buildup. To achieve a flawless wash and go that lasts, you want a fresh, clean foundation before adding any styling product. Step three is to use a deep conditioner or a hair mask. I only use a shampoo and deep conditioner. Conditioner isn't really needed, but deep conditioner is key. Using the Miel Organics Rosemary Mint Strengthening Mask, one of my favorites, and it has a very thick consistency, which is what I look for in a great deep conditioner. It absorbs into my curls and my hair just loves it. After applying my deep conditioner, I finish the rest of my shower and rinse it out. For step four, I'm using my favorite leave-in conditioner of all time. It's by As I Am, and it's their classic leave-in conditioner. This leave-in leaves my hair feeling soft and bouncy no matter what, and every time I try a new one, I always find myself coming back to this specific leave-in. My hair just loves it, and it also pairs well with many different gels. It has a creamy consistency, and it's so moisturizing, y'all. I've used this in a lot of my tutorials, so you know it's a go-to product for me.
Now for styling, since we've already cleansed and moisturized our hair in the shower, we can do step five, which is to add hold to our curls with gel. A key part of my routine is actually using two gels to create the perfect amount of holds. The first gel I'm using is the Black Castor Oil and Flaxseed Eco Styler, and I'm using a lot more of this than the second gel. For the second gel, I have to let y'all know I ran out of my all-time favorite gel, which is the Miss Jessie's Jelly Soft Curls. So a great alternative is the Curl Smith In Shower Style Fixer. It is a lot more pricey, and in my opinion, the Miss Jessie's is a lot better and has a lot less crunch. So definitely go out and buy that Miss Jessie's Jelly Soft Curls. That is the gel that you need that gives you definition and also really soft results. But like I said, since I ran out, I'm gonna be using the Curlsmith just because it has a very similar hold to the Miss Jessie's. Both of them have a very strong hold compared to like an Eco Styler. So I'm using that on top of the Eco Styler just to really lock in that definition and that curl. Another tip I have for you is to work in really small sections. If you've seen my other tutorials, you'd know I section my hair the same majority of the time in four sections, two up front, two in the back. And starting with the back section, I divide it into even smaller subsections and I coat the gel evenly on all sections. Please take your time with this part. Rushing will only mess up the final look. Once I've applied both gels all over, this is what my hair looks like. And from here, I'll let my hair set for a couple minutes and then sit under my hooded dryer for 10 to 20 minutes or until my hair is 90% dry. Here is what my hair looks like after sitting under the hooded dryer. Very important step, by the way, that I think is underrated. Y'all need to get a hooded dryer if you want a bomb wash and go. It not only decreases dry time, but helps keep the curl in place and to avoid unnecessary frizz. So at this point, my hair is dry at the ends, but still damp at the roots. So for step seven, I'm gonna be stretching my hair. If you don't mind shrinkage, then you can skip this step, but for me, stretching is essential. It's my way of adding some length and body to my hair while also getting rid of any crunch depending on what kind of gel I use. For my technique, much like the styling portion, I am once again sectioning my hair into four, starting with the back and dividing that into even smaller sections. For each small section, I'm gonna first focus on drying the roots, so I'm starting with the cool setting on low. I like to dry my roots for a couple minutes until they are completely or almost dry and then I switch to the medium heat setting on low and stretch that section using the tension method. I repeat this process until my hair is completely stretched and dry. Some of the benefits of stretching your hair includes reducing tangles and single strand knots. It makes your hair a lot more manageable and a lot easier to style also. And for those of us who are not the biggest fans of shrinkage, me, I love stretching my hair. I love having a lot more bounce to my hair and I feel like it just looks better in my opinion. You get to show off your length, but if you don't like stretching your hair or you just prefer not to use that much heat, you can for sure just not stretch your hair and embrace your shrinkage and I think that's pretty cool too. Now for my nighttime routine, it's super simple. I really don't do a lot. I once again section my hair into four with my satin scrunchies I got from Target. The satin doesn't snag against your curls when taking them out, so I highly recommend them for preserving your wash and go. I sleep just like this with my bonnet and that's it. I do this every single night no matter what and my wash and goes always last more than a week. Once I take out the scrunchies, I like to apply an oil to my scalp this one is the Essential 17 Oil by Alakay Naturals, one of my favorite brands. This oil has 17 different oils that help with hair growth and it's a really nice everyday oil just to have. By the way, this broken piece of hair that y'all see is from me cutting my own hair by accident when taking out my soft locks, so let's just ignore that. Now for the very last step in my curly hair routine, I'm going to shake and fluff my hair until I am satisfied with the look. My hair doesn't even need to be picked out at this point because with all the steps that I've done in this routine, my hair feels extremely moisturized, 
defined, bouncy, and it has volume. Feel free to use your own favorite products if you try out this routine. What's most important to me is a good technique and using products that I know work well for my hair. Here are my final results. If you made it this far into the video, I appreciate you and thank you so much for watching. If you learned something from this video or if you have anything helpful to share, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll see you all in my next video. Stay blessed. Sunshine on my life